the mic and ask her the question. Good evening, sir. I'm a lecturer by profession and also a research scholar in Islam and comparative studies. May I know your name, please? I'm Nilima. I respect your great enlightenment, sir, but I have a small qualification to be made. Like, uh, let us go back to the Bhavishya Purana, Patri, Khantri, Adhyay 3, and Slokas 5 to 8. Uh, before going to this, I would just like to mention that maybe you already know because every prophet who comes in the name of God will fulfill the prophecy which is made for him. So any prophet who fulfills 50% of that prophecy is not qualified to be a prophet. I mean, this is a simple logical thing. So now coming back to the Bhavishya Purana, you talked about the Malaysia leader saying that he is none other than Muhammad. Okay. Now I accept the first half of the thing of the sloka you said, but the second 50% which is still ignored. Now sir, let me tell you, Malaysia, the word meaning Malaysia, it is derived from Sanskrit dictionary, I mean the meaning, and the meaning means non-Aryan or sinner or wicked person. These are the three different meanings given to the word Malaysia. So according to this, can Muhammad be a sinner or a wicked person? The second part is, the second condition of the prophecy is that he will belong to Marustal and in Sanskrit, land of death. Because Maru, I mean it is derived from Sanskrit, Mru. Mru is death. And Definitely it does not quoting to the land of Arabia because it is a barren land or it is a battlefield. And next, coming to the third point of it, this prophecy also mentions that that Malaysia leader will take bath in Panchagavya and in river Ganges. And it is a common truth, we know that Ganges means Ganga river and we all know that Ganga is not in Arabia but it is in India. It is a universal fact. And coming to the taking bath in Panchagavya. The meaning of Panchagavya is five products of cow. And the products of cow is milk, curds, ghee, urine, cow dung. And now, sir, coming to this part exclusively, this prophecy must be fulfilled by Muhammad, wherein if you show me at least single reference from Quran, wherein Muhammad has taken bath in either in all these five products, that is milk, curds, ghee, urine, and cow dung, I'm ready to accept Islam today. Thank you, sir. Sister has rightly said that if the prophecy that you give, if more than 50% is not fulfilled, then the prophecy is wrong. I agree with you, sister. I agree with you. And I will answer all your three queries. Let's see whether you accept Islam or not today. That's a different thing that you may not agree with the truth. I will speak to you. I agree with you. Malaysia, I agree with you all your three definitions. Malaysia, one of the meaning is non-Aryan, meaning a foreigner. One of the meaning is sinner, one is a wicked person. That's the reason, like the Hindus, they call the Muslims as Malaysia. When they say that, they mean actually wicked and sinner. But the other meaning is also foreigner. As far as when I speak, when I quote from any scripture, while quoting and while taking the meaning, it's not necessary that if the word has got four meanings, then more than two meanings should be correct. No. Even if one is correct, the meaning is right. For example, the Quran says that don't have pig. Today, if you open the dictionary, one of the slang meanings for pig is a cop, means a policeman. So one meaning is pig. The other meaning is a policeman. But naturally, the Quran and the Bible, when the Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, and the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 and 5, when it says, don't have pig, it doesn't mean don't have a policeman. <laughs> if you're a student of comparative religion, if there are 10 meanings, even if one is correct, you have to choose the right one. Two may be correct, three may be correct, all 10 may be correct. But even if one is correct out of 10, it can fulfill the prophecy. So here I agree with you, sister. Malaysia does mean non-Aryan. To Indian, it will be a foreigner. And I said in my speech when I translated, a Malaysia means a foreigner. Now you want to go in the wrong way and say Malaysia means wicked here. That is a misunderstanding, sister. 
If you say the Bible says and the Quran still don't have a policeman, that means you're not a student of comparative religion. You are a novice. If any one of the meanings fulfills the prophecy, one more thing. If there's a doubt, there are 10 points I mentioned. All the others can't be refuted. Your second meaning, marustal. One of the marustal, I do agree. Mar means death. But the other meaning of marustal in Sanskrit is a sandy track. You go back to the dictionary today and open. In our Islamic Research Foundation, we have a Sanskrit dictionary also, sister. I'm a student of comparative religion. I do agree. One is a place of death. The other is a sandy track. So why are you taking the wrong meaning? That means you're going out of the way. So if you see the permutation and combination, all the other points I mentioned are 100% correct. Here also, you have to choose the right meaning. So one of the meanings of marustal means a sandy track or a desert. Coming to your third question. And you accepting Islam, inshallah. <laughs> the third question that I mentioned in the prophecy, that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took a bath in the Panch Garv, in the Ganges. Now here we analyze that when we say, in the Hindu terminology, when you say bath in the Panch Garv, in the Ganges, it means to purify. One means actually you dip yourself in the Ganges, which I don't expect the Prophet came and dipped himself in the Ganges. It means to purify. I did not give the explanation because the lecture is very long. I can speak on this topic for the full day. I did not give details of everything. I can speak on each prophecy for another few minutes, even for us together. So here, having a bath in the Panch Garv means purify. So depending upon the context, it doesn't mean a physical bath. And even if you physically have a bath in the Panch Garv, in the Ganges, not necessarily you will be purified. It is the philosophy of the Hinduism. So here, when the prophecy says that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had a bath in the Panch Garv, it doesn't mean he came here in the Ganges. It means that he was purified by Almighty God. And we believe that all the prophets of God, all, whether it be Moses, Jesus Christ, peace be upon them, and Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa all of them were masoom. They were innocent. They were pure. So all the prophets of God, of Almighty God, which he sent down, all of them we consider to be innocent, to be masoom, to be pure. So this answers the question, and I hope, inshallah, you'll accept Islam, sister. Salam, salam.